Hello and welcome back to Logan Sounds Off. Today on my podcast I'm going to be doing another album review and this week's album review is going to be the classic jazz album Time Out by Dave Brubeck, the Dave Brubeck Quartet, which consists of Paul Desmond on the alto saxophone, Dave Brubeck on the piano, Eugene Wright on the bass and Joe Morello on the drums. This isn't um, obviously one of the normal pressings where usually you'd have actually the original cover is here, right here. But this is a a new version that was released, I think, uh, two years ago maybe, where it's all the songs except it has just a bonus track at the end of side B, which is called Audrey. So I picked this up in um, Golden Discs in white water in newbridge and uh, this is an awesome album and this has an awesome uh, collection of different albums where they repress them give them a new cover give them a new uh, color of vinyl as well so examples would be lady in satin by billy holiday nina simone forbidden fruit um, the best of Django Reinhardt and other things like that just really really cool albums that everybody loves but they do it on really nice colors and um, for example I was able to get this on lovely yellow so really cool album which you see here is side B it's on this side anyway so it's a beautiful album as you can see I'm mauling it though um, so I'm just gonna pop this back in but I do love this album and I bought this recently but I had a problem with my stylus <coughs> on my record player the heavyweight vinyl because i believe there's either 180 grams or it's 140 i'm not sure wouldn't play very well so they might just be a little bit distorted or the needle might bounce for example in one of the songs on this album which is called blue rondo a la turk i hope i pronounced that right i bet you i didn't but look i tried um the symbols were bouncing a lot where instead of the symbol being just regularly um, sitting where it's meant to be in the track, it was it was going from side to side on the speakers. It was playing on one side and then another. So it was a bit weird, but I recently got a new stylus because the other one just couldn't take the pressure. I don't know what I did. I might have put it on wrong, but anyways, it didn't take the pressure and came off. So now that I listen back to this, I really enjoy listening to this album because I was quite reluctant to go back to it since since obviously i couldn't play it very well but it's a fantastic album there's no doubt about that but what i find is especially where one of the reasons why i like my podcast is because as a 13 year old i have very un unfiltered opinions so i review classic albums and recently uh, another classic album that's actually mentioned on the back of this album that would be very well known as another one that Jazz collectors would think of it as a cliche by this stage would be Kind of Blue by Miles Davis. And I reviewed that as well on my podcast. If you want to discover more on that episode, the link will be down below. But I just found it really interesting discovering this album for the first time when I've heard so much about it and getting my own opinion on such a classic and loved album. And where I love finding an album that is great and people think it's really good and are always saying oh it's one of the best jazz albums ever where a lot of them might be people just beaming it up because people love it but this particular album I actually felt deserved that title it's a really interesting album and has some very interesting themes in it especially with the introductory track which is called Blue Rondo a la Turk I really tried if I said it wrong just let me be ignorant i'm so sorry um but this song's really cool simply because um it it starts off kind of intensely there's some but it builds up to this really loud moment of just stabs we have some piano stabs and the drums get very loud and eugene wright and the bass gets really insane. And the bass on this album is actually fantastic. So I'll get to that in a couple of minutes. But um, no. Blue Rondo a la Turk is a good track. But what I love about it is that it has the ability to swiftly change from intensity to relaxing themes. So I thought that was really interesting to hear while 
listening to this particular track, the way it could move from such interesting themes very differently. And I think that what's that's what makes it such a versatile track. Whereas it's something that you could listen to in the background, especially this album do, does feel like something that you could listen to in the background, but also something that you could really focus in on. And the whole album is versatile in that factor, but I just thought I'd give that song a highlight um, spotlight there simply because it just really works with that very well and it's just a really cool 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 song but when you go from this to strange meadow lark strange meadow lark isn't as ex- like experimental in theme progression going from theme to theme but that's not a bad thing essentially i'm not saying that in a bad way this song is actually one of my favorites on the album it's very very relaxing and it's just a really lovely track. And there's a lot of songs in this, particularly towards side B, where you just have some beautiful themes, really, that you can... It's just... you Pictures come to mind while listening to it. And I'm going to come to that in a second because it's very interesting. But Strange Meadowlark is a really... This is one of the more background-suited songs, in my opinion, on this album. And it is very interesting. It does feel weird playing after the intense track we heard before but it does suit where it is placed on the track list i like strange meadow lark and you go from an intense track to a chill track now to a very classic track that a lot of people know and for i would say probably last recently about two years ago all I knew by Dave Brubeck. I'd say actually one year ago, all I knew was Dave Brubeck was this song, Take a Five. And <clears throat> I love just some of the names on this, the songs and album, and this album, like Time Out, Take Five, is just really cool. But this particular song is classic, and it is a really good track, and it is definitely deserving of that spot with maybe the likes of Flamenco Sketches by... Miles Davis or you also have um Acknowledgement by John Coltrane things like that and if you want to check out my I Love Supreme um review by John Coltrane link will be down below but you've got a lot of those classic tracks and Take 5 sits in there fairly comfortably as a song because it's it's just even the 5-4 time is really cool and a lot of these songs it's really funny where I see a lot of people they might know like 4-4 time but when they say oh have you ever heard a 5-4 time and then when somebody explains what 5-4 time is to them they're like wow I actually that's in so many songs and Take 5 is a great example of this of a really nice track where a lot of 5-4 songs or maybe 3-3 three, three songs are a lot more uh, in waltz music so people will be more used to it in a contemporary setting but 5-4 time it's really interesting and take five really brings f- it's it's just interesting looking back on five four time then and now where it's not as heard of especially when you look in the charts it's n- not seen at all but take five is such a popular track that um it's cool seeing especially with dave brubeck if you actually read about him on this he is insane like as a writer for music he did i think something like 13 four time which is just so mad to me so what's cool is about this album is that he takes really insane time signatures for people like me and then as well you've got just weird time signatures as well that just sound and completely strange to the ear and makes them really really cool and I just love that about this record but especially just take five the piano at the start Dave on the piano is really really cool but I have to say Paul Desmond and I didn't really hear as in the saxophone didn't st- stand out to me as much as maybe the piano did or the bass or the drums actually a lot Joe Morello is very good on the drums Paul Desmond though played very well in take five and really just added a whole new sense to the song so side b or sorry side a was very interesting in that factor where you went to something that was intense that introduced the album very very well to something that was more relaxing more fun to something that is a classic and it was really really cool just looking at this 
Um, and honestly, I love this side. The next side is a good bit longer than the previous side. The side before this is approximately around um, it's around eighteen minutes, but this one is a lot longer. And um, you have more tracks. You have um, this one is twenty minutes, so you get those extra. Or sorry, you only get two extra minutes. Sorry, but there are more tracks on this side. Yeah, there's some, including Audrey, which I'm going to speak about in a second. But you've got some really fun tracks on this album, and I have to say. Blue Rondo a la Turk is uh, like the most, uh, nearly a dark song. And it's the only really darker song on this album. The rest are all just happy or they're really calm or they're fun or they're playful. A lot of the songs on this are playful. And Three to Get Ready is a perfect example of this. And this runs into Kathy's Waltz really well. And I love the start of Side B. I'm not saying I don't love the end, but just the start of Side B really peaked out to me. And I really enjoyed Three to Get Ready and Kathy's Waltz. They're both really, really cool songs. And the alto sax is really good in this, again, with Desmond. And Brubeck's piano playing is incredible in this. Regarding the bass and the drums, the drums are really well reflected on Blue Rondo a la Turk. And that's the same with the bass as well. The bass is very good on this album, though. And I do think that the bass is very important as an instrument th throughout this album. But... Regarding then Everybody's Jumping, there's a more lively song and Pick Up Sticks as well, which is another quite cool song that I love. And these songs all work together really, really well. And Everybody's Jumping is just a really cool track. It will be one of my favourites on the album. But I just want to focus in on the last track on this side for a sec. And then I'm going to just speak about the album as a whole. Audrey is a bonus track on this particular release. And there are a lot of bonus tracks on this collection of the masterworks. But Audrey is a good song, but I do see why it didn't make onto the original album. But I was really happy to see it here and I was happy that I could take it into consideration regarding my review. Whereas when you look at some of the actual some of the albums on this, for example, one which is uh Frank Sinatra and Count. Basically, uh, you have two bonus tracks, and then um, you you there's one album on this that you have actually nine bonus tracks that they put a lot of work into this particular masterwork series. So I checked this out. But anyways, I was really though delighted to see Kind of Blue get a bonus track. So I'm curious to see what that is. But I've already bought Kind of Blue on vinyl, and I'm not gonna buy it again for one bonus track. But no. Time Out was a really cool album and I love listening to it. It's clear why it's classic. It's a really cool album and I was so happy to buy it on vinyl. Though I will say before I do this, I say it in a lot of my reviews, I'm not saying it's a five star because I think, oh, it should be a five star because everybody loves it. I genuinely think this is a good album. It's the same with The Love Supreme. It's the same with Miles Davis. It's the same with all of the jazz albums that I've reviewed and all of the prestigious classics that I've reviewed. It's not because of other people I rate them. It's for myself. I genuinely love them. So I hope you enjoyed my review. Um, I know you've heard a lot of this album and I love listening to this album and I thought it was really, really interesting. Um, and I hope you enjoyed listening into my review. Please, the subscribe button. It's down there if you're into music if you're into books albums if you're a record collector like me please subscribe it really helps if you enjoyed the video please give it a like it helps out so much and if you thought maybe I said something that you agreed on in the review or something that you thought maybe I was uh, saying was a bit weird regarding one of the tracks in the album let me know down in the comments and I will try to reply to you please if you have jazz um, friend, or sorry, friends who are into jazz music, family members, share this on. It really does go such a long way and I would really appreciate if you could do it. But as usual, for people who do subscribe, like and share, thank you so much for your support. It's deeply appreciated. But if you didn't like the review, thanks for listening anyway. It's really appreciated. I hope you have a good day and I hope you enjoyed my review of the Dave Brubeck's Quartet Time out.